Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to talk about directed graphical models. I want to give an introduction and then later on, by a simplistic example, we're going to implement them in TensorFlow probability. So directed graphical models are a way to help us factorize joint distributions. So it's about joint distributions. Recall a joint distribution is a probability density function or a probability mass function with more than one random variable as an input. So for instance, this is P of A, B and C. And the directed graphical model is a way to factorize this joint distribution into simpler terms, into conditional terms or marginal terms by the physical interpretation of the problem. So factorizing according to the interpretation. And this, for example, helps us to sample and to calculate likelihood. Because this is way easier if you have a simple distribution or simple distributions instead of one big joint. Okay. Let us look at this following example. Here we have the directed graphical model given for a joint distribution. Each of the bubble here represents a random variable. These random variables are linked with arrows and these arrows indicate that we have some sort of a graph here. These arrows make sense because a directed graphical model is a DAG or a directed acyclic graph. Directed, of course, we have arrows and acyclic because there are no circles or directed circles um, in our graph. And this particular example is about happiness. So we are asking us what is affecting our happiness. And for the sake of simplicity, we say the night sleep quality is affecting it and the weather is affecting it. And the weather itself is again affected by the season. So we have the dependency going from the season to the weather, for instance, and the arrow is indicating this conditional independence. And we can then start to build a factorization. But before, let us associate shortcuts or abbreviations for these random variables. Let's call this N, let's call this S, W and H. And, oh, I forgot about this. Here we have another random variable, but this is not linked to any of the others. And this is Elon Musk's sleep quality. Let's call this E. Okay, let's start. So we have a probability density function or probability mass function dependent on the season the night sleep quality, the weather, the happiness, and Elon Musk's sleep quality. Well, and as you might have guessed, since there is no link in between Elon Musk's sleep quality and any of the other random variables, it is marginally independent or just independent. And this in a sense means that if we have a joint distribution with it, this is equal to the distribution by itself times the rest, so times distribution of S, N, W, and H. Then we can identify another thing. The night sleep quality and the season don't have any incoming arrows. So these are what we are calling root nodes or roots, similar to graph theory. And by this we know that they also have an independent distribution. So we have a P of Elon Musk's sleep quality times the probability of the season times the probability of the night sleep quality times the probability of the happiness and the weather. And now we have to take care because there are incoming arrows from the roots. They are dependent on the roots. So they are dependent on S and N. Okay. Then last step, we have to factorize this one. And let's first start with the season and the weather. So we are keeping all the stuff, P of E, 
p of s, p of n, and then we know this is times the probability of the weather, which depends on the season, and the probability of the happiness, it depends on the night sleep quality and the weather. And this is our factorization. Okay, let's continue and associate actual distributions to these random variables or to these p's here. And therefore we look at an even more simple example, so a simpler example. And here we just have the weather and the happiness. And we know, similar to before, we have the joint of the weather and the happiness is the probability of the weather times the probability of the happiness given the weather. And let's make it simple and associate only two states with each of the variables. So the weather can be bad and good. And let's say happiness for simplicity can also be bad and good. Of course, this can be a little more detailed. Then, then let's encode them as numbers. So let's call this 0 and 1. And this also 0 and 1. And when you then see two state, random variable, discrete, okay, this rings a bell. This is a Bernoulli. Both are Bernoullis. So what we have to do is we have to define a probability mass function as a Bernoulli and say the weather is distributed according to a Bernoulli with a parameter. And then the happiness is also distributed according to a Bernoulli with a parameter. Okay, let's wait. This depends. Because let's say, for instance, the weather is good, then you are more likely to be happy. But if the weather is bad, then maybe your mood is not as good and the happiness is not as high. So, of course, it is a Bernoulli, but it's more than one Bernoulli. So, it is a Bernoulli with a certain parameter if the weather is bad, and it is another Bernoulli with a certain parameter if the weather is good. Okay, let's just select some values here. For the sake of simplicity, let's say, with a probability of 30%, the weather is good. Let's say it's 0 0.3. And if the weather is bad, then you are only 60% probable to be happy. And if the weather is good, then you are more likely to be happy. Let's look how this is implemented in TensorFlow probability. Now I'm in a terminal and I'm opening up an interactive Python session. First, I will import a package in order to suppress TensorFlow warnings. Then I will import TensorFlow. And I will import TensorFlow probability. There are three ways to define um, joint distributions in TensorFlow probability or directed graphical models. And we will use the way where we go over a coroutine or a generator. And this is a Python function that uses the yield command. So we first define our first random variable, and this is the weather. And we yield, because yield is associated with all the random variables appearing in our joint distribution. And we are yielding the distribution related to weather. And this is not just any distribution, it's also the root node. So we have to mark this by saying TensorFlow probability distribution joint distribution coroutine dot root. And then we can say what kind of distribution it is. And it is a Bernoulli. And we set the probability to 30%. And the name is weather. And let's close this down. Okay, next up we said that the probability of happiness depends on the weather. And we have to encode this. Therefore, we create an array where we save these probabilities. Let's say, let's call this weather to happiness. 
and this is a constant array so it's a constant tensor and it consists of the values 60% happiness if at bad weather and 90% happiness at good weather and this works because weather is encoded either as 0 or 1 so we can index this array this array and then we know happiness is another yield because it's another random variable and it's tensor probability distributions Bernoulli and the probability is the weather to happiness array accessed as at the okay let's give it a second at the weather and the name is happiness Okay, and that's our generator. And then we can define the joint distribution as tensor probability distribution, joint distributions, coroutine auto batched. More details in another video why we need this version. And then we have the happiness model. And there it is. This is our joint distribution. And we see it consists of um, this. Uh, uh, of the weather and the happiness, both encoded as integers. And then we can sample this, for example, 10 samples. And we see, let's zoom out a little bit. Um, there is a day where it is bad weather, but we have good mood. And there is a day where it is good weather and we have good mood, bad weather and good mood, and so on. And we can also query the probability so model joint dot probability and let's say what is the probability for a good weather and a good mood and that's 0 0.27 and this makes sense because if you multiply 0 0.3 with 0 0.9 this is what you will get out